Before I start this video, I just want to say, how did BLG lose? And how did 100 Thieves win? And how did FlyQuest lose? Actually, it's not. It's T1 at World, so who's actually surprised? But what's going on, guys? So Apple has done the unthinkable and released a new chip after M4, and they've called it the M5, which is actually pretty predictable that they would make M5. I don't know what else people would expect, but let's talk about some of those changes, like the changes to the sponsor of today's video. Nobody. I already have the laptop ordered and I'm probably gonna skip out on the iPads, but let's talk about the M5 in a little bit more detail. Now, I know you guys are going to love this of the M5 because it's one of the favorite words of all of the 2020s. And say with me, it is AI. Yes, the M5 is mainly an AI upgrade from M4. M5 is for people who are still on M1, dare I say, Intel laptops. So it makes sense why a lot of their marketing and comparisons are around those generation of products. Let's talk about some of the improvements with the MacBook Pro and M5. So we have some neural accelerators and higher memory bandwidth, which is a massive improvement from M1. But from the previous generation of M4, it's mainly the neural accelerators on each core. The memory bandwidth was already pretty high, but we do have an increase going up, I believe, 30%. The maximum amount of memory is 32 gigabytes, which is double of what you get from M1. While some people might say 32 gigabytes of RAM isn't enough these days, with unified memory slowly becoming the norm, with Nvidia just releasing their own product with unified RAM, if you want to use higher parameter LLMs or more complex LLMs all in par parallel, um, it's better for us to have higher memory bandwidth and higher RAM on these machines so we can be less reliant on some of those data centers that will eventually just be retrofitted into empty buildings, but that's a story for another day. So storage also doubles from both M4 all the way down to M1, and we can go up to four terabytes on the M5 MacBook Pro. Apple is saying the speeds of the SSD are going to be twice the performance of the previous generation, which is already kind of insane in the MacBook world. Um, but they are saying rendering should be faster, importing should be faster, just downloading files in general should be faster um, with those higher SSD speeds. So with people downloading all these local LLMs, you should download it. I don't know if it's, it's twice as fast, but it's gonna be faster than what you've had before. But now I'm actually curious about what Apple plans on releasing for M5 Pro and the M5 Max chips, because if this is where we're going with M5, I'm already pretty impressed. So from the previous generation, the display is the same, the camera is the same. Spec-wise, the speakers are the same, but Apple is known to tune their laptops a little bit differently. Um, no Wi-Fi 7 or N1 chip, which is interesting. Not really. Um, I guess it really makes sense in products that are reliant on cell service, like the Apple Watch, the iPhone, the iPad. Um, the display, I will say, you can get the nano texture finish on the um, entry-level pro model now but you guys already know my take on nano texture on the laptop just move your laptop if it really does give you that much of a glare um, i would really only recommend the nano texture option because i think it's like a hundred or 150 dollars um, if you work in an environment where you are primarily outside then i think it's worth it but for the average consumer save your money upgrade the ram or storage instead if you really want to spend an extra 150 200 on your laptop what does this all mean for workflows though like your everyday well like i said this is more of an ai enhanced chip from the previous generation with the improvements in the graphical department um, but apple is saying we have 3.5 times more in the AI performance and 1.6 in the graphics, but that's not it though. They do have actual performance in the CPU themselves, giving us 20% more performance in multi-threaded applications. Um, but like I said, if you plan on doing more local LLM stuff or doing a lot more testing or graphical work, that's where I would say the M5 makes a bit more sense. But if you aren't really trying to run like 20, plus billion parameters locally on your machine, I would say it's not really worth it, especially if you're not adding in more memory on your machine. Cause I think that's where it's really gonna benefit a lot of people. Cause a lot of the smaller models, not that great, unless you fine tune them, I will say that. Um, but let's talk about the iPads now because somehow this product has become Apple's guinea pig on some of their greatest inventions. Well, not greatest, but some pretty good ones. So I don't know when Tandem OLED is coming to MacBooks, but if they do, I'll genuinely be shocked on that day. But until then, the iPad Pro holds probably one of the best displays on Apple's um, display lineup, um, I guess outside of the XDR display, which um, Apple also should 
probably update that as well. Um, but everything that I said on M5 on the MacBook Pro is pretty much in the iPad Pro. Even the iPad Pro has had nano texture for a bit now. Um, oddly enough though, the iPad Pro does have Wi-Fi 7 since it does have the M1 and the C1X chip. You guys didn't know, the iPad Pro actually had a bit of a refresh last year that made the device really thin. Really, really thin. And from a tablet perspective, it's probably one of the most performant tablets on the market period. And now that it has M5 and you can add in um, the unified memory, you could probably run some local LLMs on the iPad Pro, which is uh, kind of crazy to say. So with this announcement, what's my take? Well, Apple, if you do plan on releasing the new Apple TV 4K, uh, let it have pass through and allow us to play Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos on our own content, because I will be a happy man, because that's the only product I really care about right now with all the home lab stuff I'm doing. But in all serious, coming back to the MacBooks, um, M1 users, you are probably okay if you have 16 gigabytes of RAM. If you have eight gigabytes of RAM, you might get to the point where you're considering upgrading to the M5 or even the M4 Air, in my opinion. I don't think you need to go up to the M5. Um, if you do want it to go to the M5, I'd say wait till the springtime when the MacBook Air M5 ends up coming out. Um, but regardless, I would say if you aren't running local LLMs or taxing your computer right now, I'd say just keep it until people, like I've said in my previous videos, bless your heart. Um, I really have no idea how you're using a laptop that's louder than a Boeing 737 Max just to open up google.com. But Apple is really, and I really do mean really trying to convince you to upgrade, which I say you probably should, but... I have no right on what people should and shouldn't do. That's just my suggestion. Um, but the value of your laptop has dropped significantly and is going to continuously drop significantly. And I know for the Intel people, from how much money they've probably dropped into their MacBook Pros, it might be hard to comprehend, but <laughs> any Apple Silicon laptop with similar RAM is going to outperform your current laptop and probably do it in silence. But if you wanna keep it, more power to you. Um, I probably won't upgrade to these laptops. I'll test it out for you guys, give you guys my um, final thoughts and conclusions on them once I start using them. But I do have them ordered. Like I said before, stay tuned. Appreciate every single sub, like, and comment. And as always, guys, much love. Um, oh yeah, Apple Vision Pro, uh, everyone's favorite product, now comes with M5. All right, so if the setup looks a little bit janky, it's because it is. I already have the, lap already have the laptop ordered. I already have the laptop ordered and I'm probably gonna, M4, it's mainly the neural accelerators on each chip, or excuse me, each core. Excuse me, Apple, don't sue me. While some people, while some people might say, while some people might say 32, what does the M5 actually need in workflow? Th workflow though. What does that mean for workflows throw, though? Apple is saying that we have 3.5 times performance in AI performance, 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 performance. One of the most perf, perf performant, la Performant tab.